Well guys, another day, another dollar. Our gearbox is in. We're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put a new gearbox in our gearing off head. Gonna get that deer head cleaned up, get that back to them. In the meantime, we're gonna load the sprayer, try to do some fall apply. Gonna be a few things going on, so check it out. We use our forklift. We drill a hole in the end of the fork, hook it up to the trailer. We're gonna back the head into the shop. The new gearbox is gonna set here. Our dealer has already put the crown gear on the new gearbox for us, and they're actually dropping it off. So thanks, Bane Welker, and thanks to Reynolds and Muncie for letting us use the John Deere head. Uh, appreciate getting some time with it. So we'll get this in the shop, get to it. have to get it inside because it's gonna get dark before we're gonna before we can have that done so if we get inside it's not too bad got the corn head in the shop your box is not quite here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill the sprayer 1200 gallons STS 12 So I have my master switch, my auto steer button, boom up and down, the wing left, right, I can move that all around there. For the most part, we run this, which is your uh, automatic boom control, NORAC, it's a UC7, I believe. And once again, steering with the John Deere 2630, kind of a fan of that. Uh, on Shows so when we undo our brake, it also raises the ladder. So if you're around the Hague and you see the ladder raise, you know the operator's about to move. And we simply forward for the same amount of motion. The radio just come over, we're talking rates. And then gear shifters here, I've got higher I'm trying to think how many I have I think four speeds gets up to 36 miles an hour which is pretty fast for as tall as this is rides on four big airbags so it's kind of a unique ride so we're gonna hop out here to fill on the ladder there's a three inch hook up here we fill using a three inch pump so I just hook my hose banjo quick couple here and I run it over to here put this valve on the trailer and we start pumping water and to do the chemicals I flip my switch here we operate the screen inside I'll show you about that here in a few minutes. So we start our pump. We'll pump some water. I climb back up here. I'm going to fire up the pump on the sprayer and start the agitation process as we fill. We agitate the, the water and chemical blend. It's my version of a stair stepping machine. <laughs> Takes a minute to get back up here come in we go over we will enable our pump and open our agitation see our agitation there picking up PSI we have a gauge here and we are agitating at 40 PSI at the moment now we'll go back down and we're gonna induct our chemicals So we've got our 48 foot van. We have two chemical shuttles in here now. We can hook up to four. 
So as we want to induct a chemical, I just hold my finger on the button. It tells how many gallons of each that we need in the tank. It also tells us how much water it dispenses into the tank, how many chemical gallons it dispenses. My brother and Noah built this. Here's all the valve bodies to induct the separate chemicals. We use the suction from the three inch pump. We can wean the pump back right here, or the water back. It makes the pump suck hard on, harder on the chemical side, some of the thicker chemicals we've had to. We also have two mixing cones here. We use some. Two 2,000 gallon tanks, so we, we can haul 4,000 gallons of water and four to five of these shuttles of chemicals. Bain Welker truck pulling in, there's our gearbox. The case actually was breaking on the old one, it was stuck. So we've decided to get a new gearbox. We'll rebuild this one this winter. So we've got a spare. They put our crown gear back on, our love joy. We've just gotta get it situated back in here. So you can see I hold my finger on the button and where it says dispensed, that's counting gallons of chemical, shows I've got 400 gallons of water in the tank and that's a nice feature that he added to this because you, you can't hold your finger on the button and look at the tank as it fills. So it gives you an idea of, you know, if I have four of these, it takes a while to pump it in. So you gotta really watch that and wean the water back and kind of plan as you fill. It also has an emergency stop feature, which is kind of nice. Brian did this interface and been really happy with it. Uh, it's our second year using it. It's worked flawless. This method keeps the chemicals contained. I'm just simply switching valves. The only time we have exposure is when we either have to refill a shuttle or swap valves. The method before this uh, was just simply a measuring cone like I have it in the background there and a little pump with a valve on it and you just literally fill to a line and know how many gallons of chemical you have. Splash in and smell it. So this, this is a lot better feature. Loading our job. We're going to the field that uh, in a previous video that uh, was a multi-field 141 acres, we're going in to spray that. We're going to clear the field coverage. I was there 99 days ago. We're going to get on the road. Okay, so we just entered the field where we shelled corn the other night. First thing we're going to do, we're going to lay our field out. We're going to run around the perimeter at 60 foot. To get 60 foot, I shut my two outer sections off and I only unfold my main mast, which I do with these two levers here. And like this, I can do it one handed. So we're gonna go out to 60 foot. We're gonna run around the perimeter. So you can see we're running around our perimeter at 60 foot. We've already set an AV line at 120 feet, so when I come back by, my shutoffs will shut off anywhere I've already covered. And it allows me to perimeter at 60 feet. I can't really judge the 120 feet as easily, and the boom is not very controllable at 120 feet to do edging, so I edge at 60 feet. It's worked out great so far. That's uh, my fourth year doing it. So now we're, gonna un now we're gonna unfold to 120 feet, so our 60 foot main mast is actually made out of steel and the outer wings, the other 60 foot, is aluminum. It's called a hybrid boom. John Deere come out with that when they bought Hagee in uh, 2019. And this is a 19, so this is actually a Deere version of a Hagee. It's got a Deere 6.8 in it. Not mistaken, that's 300 horsepower, I believe. Might have to correct me on that.
So we, so we hit our automatic boom height control. I can set my heights. When it's windy, I can lower some more. Uh, when it's not, I raise it up some. Now we're gonna go around the field. So we've already went 60 feet. We're gonna go 120 next to our 60 feet. And the shutoffs will automatically gauge if I do pass over into where we just sprayed. That's gonna give us a larger end row than just the 120 feet by doing the two passes. So all the fields I do two perimeter passes around. One 60 foot pass and 120 foot pass. So on the screen you can see I went from 1200 to 1099. Anyway, our 60 foot pass is there. Our 120 foot pass is this white line. So we're gonna overhang. I typically choose the straightest path here where the grain cart's been running, I'll choose that and my shutoffs will light up and shut off as needed. Then the next time I line up, I just stay on these 120 foot passes and we're on our, we will auto steer actually. We're running 15 miles an hour roughly. We're auto steering here. You can see one of my sections is shutting off. It illuminates as it shuts off. We're carrying uh, 30 PSI of agitation pressure. My Norax running my boom up and down. With 120 feet, we're capable of 20 miles per hour spraying. Uh, 15 to 17 is really about the most I like. 20 is kind of pushing it, but uh, it is capable of it. I have had to use that. Now for capacities, we're getting between 80 and 100 acres per tank and as little as 60 acres per tank when we run fungicides, high volume, like in the tall corn. We do run tall corn, that's what these are, pushes the corn over as I drive over the top. We do run skinny tires for that. So capacity wise, I have sprayed over a thousand acres in one day with this. It's all about how many times you fill. That's the hardest part. And keeping your water. You gotta have more than one water tender if you're gonna run that many acres in a day. So being 120 feet, we plant 60 feet. So we plant 24 row, 30 inch corn. So it's 60 feet wide planter. And we plant 36 rows and 20 inch spacing for a 60 foot wide bean planter. On our bean planter, we space the rows where the tires run. A little bit wider helps me line up. And also during fungicide season, many times I can run down, we call them tram rows. I can run through the trams and not smash beans. It's gonna be cool going up top. I'll take you along for the ride. We're, we're already done here. So we're getting turned around and we've got to go up our drive that we just did in the combine the other night. You can see where the grain cart's been running, right there. We are going to fold up for that, uh, just like we're going down the road. That's the best way to get through there. So I'm going to do that, not bore you guys with that process. See you in a few. So here's our road where the grain cart was running to get out to the highway the other night. We're going to take the sprayer up through here. Now this has been farmed before. We opted not to. It rolls. We've got a friend that hunts here. And just decided to let this be, be the way it is. We keep it mowed. If we ever decide to go crop, we could. We just have to do some of the erosion type things. So we're gonna run 60 foot around all of these fields on the top. Not gonna to video a lot of that. Probably come back to you when I get in some of the hills right over here. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I put my phone in the cup holder because I have to have both hands. It's gonna take a long to drive. So we've got trees. I raised my boom up above some of the things. I manually control one of the 60 foot. That's why I've got to have both hands. 
So we're coming up on a fence row. Now for the hills. Definitely want to raise our boom up. Just to give it a chance not to be dragging in the ground because there's a lot, a lot of uh, ravines, dips, holes, all the fun things we have here. So we're going to try to do some spraying without tearing it up. Uh, we usually get in and out of here pretty good. It does take some extra time though. Okay, I'm going to go just throw some rough area here. I don't know how this will turn out. May or may not use it. I'm going to take you along for the ride. See, we have to run a certain speed to keep brake. So I can't slow down or I get the beeper and you've got all these wild uh, obstacles. There's a ravine here that I'm kind of parallel to. I've got to watch as it turns. I come up in the corner. Stay out of the ravine. Talk about what I'm seeing and I got into my 60 foot zone. Let off. We made it. So you can kind of see we've got to go uphill. It kind of bends there. It's got a little... Dip. I'll go around those. Um, it really works the NORAC. Uh, 120 feet. It's crazy what these hills do as far as what it has to do to keep the boom out of the dirt. <laughs> See the shutoffs working when the light comes on. We've already did that area. As you can kind of see on the screen up there. We're coming for a big dip. I better grab my right hand. So we're going to go down. Now we have to help the NORAC when we're going down in a deep one like this. You just kind of help it, lower it, reach back over, put it back on your automatic, and you made it through. I hope that didn't seem too bad. <laughs> shutoffs work. We're entering a zone where we've already sprayed. Right there. We're still spraying out there. And we ended. Got that done, we're folding up. We still have 257 gallons in this tank, so we're gonna move to the next field to empty out and be done for the evening. Finding our way back out for the last time until we bring the mower back. The next pass in here will be in the spring with fertilizer. You can see our grain cart path from the other night. 
she was driving through here to get to the highway to go to that other site to fill the semis where we were parking those. So I'm just driving out that way. We'll get on the highway. I think I'm going to home base to spray out what I have left. So my right side boom light is out. I can still get the tank empty, 164 gallons. Got a left side boom light I'll be able to see there. I'm going to grab a safe spot out in the field just to get the tank empty. I'll show you a little bit about the boom light since we're in the dark. You can see our boom illuminates. And that's actually showing me where the spray is. And without it, you have that. We're going to run just enough to get this tank empty, and we're going to get that up. Boom lights help you run at night. I do some night spraying. It's not ideal at times, but it definitely fits the bill when it's windy springs, things like that. We have to have access to the lights. Folding up. We're going to call that a night with the sprayer. We're going to look into that boom light. probably see quite a bit more. I think we've only got 800 acres sprayed, so we'll probably see quite a bit more of this sprayer running. So I was ready to shut down, and I hear it at a high idle, and this light's illuminated. It is cleaning its DPF, diesel exhaust particulate filter. It has to sit here and just, I call it doing a burnout. So we're going to give it a minute, and hopefully it goes through that and is successful. We've had issues with it before, but really not too bad, sensor here or there. Back to Cornholin tonight. Cycling trucks. It's a tight fit. Real tight. Got the gearing off in the shop for tonight. Mark, so pretty exciting today.
getting towards the end of the night. Dumping off some more wet corn, top it up. Our dryer will run. I'm gonna flip this truck around. I'm gonna load dry corn for in the morning. Start the process over again tomorrow. First truck loaded to dry. Get out of the way and we'll dump the next truck of wet right there. Noah's been getting the gearbox back in. Put a new one in. Looking pretty good.